What's going on guys? It's the Edge Boys with a Z. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's JP and Alan with Edge Autosport. Thanks for joining us today. We're doing an awesome video, uh, one that we've been wanting to do for a long time with the XDI fuel pump. The XDI fuel pump is gonna allow us to take the car past like kind of the full bolt-ons and that Garrett Powermax turbo upgrade that we've done. It's gonna take us to the next step uh, of power without upgrading to a turbo. So as we've told you before, we're gonna do bigger turbo upgrades on this car, probably multiple bigger turbo upgrades. But before we do that, we wanna test and see what the XDI fuel pump can do for us by adding some ethanol uh, content. We've already tuned the car on E30, but you know, it really maxes it out at that point with the stock fuel system. We're gonna upgrade with the XDI pump and do a little bit a higher concentration of ethanol and see where we go from there. So this is kind of the foundation layer of getting to the bigger turbo, bigger power, but it's important for us to see what this thing will do kind of with the stock-ish uh, turbo of the Garrett Powermax mixed with the XDI pump, how much ethanol content we can run. So Alan's gonna tell you a little bit about what this thing is, what it does, what he's doing with it today, and why it's gonna allow us to make more power. So this is the XDI Evo pump, and XDI actually has a really good video on their YouTube channel, which we'll link in the description, uh, that goes into a lot of detail about the Evo pump and comparing it to the XDI 35, which is the smaller version of the pump or the less output version of the pump. Uh, but the short story is the Evo pump flows more fuel at higher pressure than the 35. And so you can run higher pressure uh, without sacrificing the efficiency that you would on the 35. Uh, we're gonna be installing this with the Powermax turbo still in the car and then upping the ethanol content because that is uh, another question that I get asked all the time, that I see asked all the time is, uh, can I run fully 85 on my stock turbo? Can I run fully 85 on this setup? And the answer is no, without upgraded fueling, you shouldn't run E85. You can, but you gotta bring boost so far down that it negates any gains you have from ethanol. So in order to actually see what is left on the table by running higher concentrations of ethanol, uh, we can put this on the car and then start adding more and more ethanol and see how much more power we can get. Because right now at our altitude, the turbo's maxed out. We can't get anything more out of the turbo, no more boost. So it's all gonna come, any power we get is gonna come from the ethanol content and maybe a little bit more spark advance, um, which we will be able to run on higher ethanol contents. So we're gonna get this on the car and then we're gonna try to answer some of these questions and kind of see what gains we can get on a stockish turbo. Uh, and then of course, in the future, like JP said, we've got other turbos we're gonna be installing. Uh, and also in the future, we'll, we'll be installing the XDI injectors as well on this car. But uh, yeah, we wanna see what happens, so. One thing I wanted to mention too, we get a lot of questions about, should I do this or should I do aux fuel or, you know, based on goals or based on, you know, budget or things like that. We're not gonna lie, this is not an inexpensive upgrade. It's it's pretty pricey, it's high tech, it's, it's hard to make, so it does cost a lot of money. However, the practicality and the benefit of it uh, is totally worth every dime. This is all controlled through the factory ECU tuned with the Cobb access port. So there's no adding of extra uh, tuning systems, um, no extra calibration going on. This is all basically like tuning the factory fuel system just with higher flow. So uh, although expensive and, and kind of a big commitment is much more practical and can easily get you to your goals without complexity, so. And speaking of uh, tuning, you have to have a tune if you put this on. Absolutely. You cannot run this on a stock tune or any tune that is not specifically calibrated for this pump. So, all right, shall, shall we install it? Let's do this, let's get started and uh, we'll get to tuning here pretty soon. All right. So while JP does manual labor, I'm going to show you guys what comes in the box, this kit. You get a new high pressure fuel line, some bolts. Uh, you're gonna have two bolts because the pump itself 
bolts to the flange and the flange bolts to the engine. Uh, and then, of course, the pump itself. Uh, so yeah, we've got the Evo pump here. And when you're installing this, you're gonna have to orientate it because the flange goes on first, this is kind of second, uh, and you have to make sure you bolt the flange down first and then you rotate it so the pump lines up and then you bolt the pump down to the flange. Um, and JP's gonna get this intake out of the way and then we're gonna get the old pump off and go ahead and get this installed. This is really a, it's a beautiful piece in the engine bay. You're not gonna be able to see it super well but it sure does look aggressive sitting back there. I really, I just love the look of this thing. Uh, and it does plug in, uh, direct plug and play to the uh, factory harness too. So it's suggested that you check your cam follower and make sure that there's no uh, wear or anything on it while you've got it out. And then we're also gonna check and see where it's at on the cam lobe right now, because when we put the new pump in, we want it to be on the flat part of the cam lobe. So on the ST, it's a three lobe, a triangle shaped uh, lobe or cam uh, profile for the follower and for the, for, for the high pressure pump. And so you don't want it to be on a peak. You want it to be on a flat spot. When you put it in, it makes it a lot easier to get the pump in. Uh, so we're gonna, our cam follower does not appear to have any wear on it that would be concerning. Uh, so we're gonna kind of peek back there and then make sure that the cam is in the right position to put the new pump in. And we're gonna be super careful not to get any crud from the flange down into that area. Flatten it. Yeah, like that peak. Yeah, it's all the way flat. Okay. So for those of you that are wondering what we were doing, we put it in six gear and we pushed it to, which rotates the engine a little bit. And we were able to see the peak was almost at the top. It was just barely over from top on the peak. And then as we pushed it, it rolled over flat. So now uh, it's in a position that is gonna be better to install the pump, so what he said next step will be not forgetting to put the cam follower back in <laughs> yeah if anything gets screwed up at this point it's pretty much going to be on alan so that'll always be the case these two bolts line up with two bolts in the flange i don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera uh but when you're installing it you can see this covers the bolt hole for the flange. So you rotate it to where it doesn't cover the bolt hole for the flange. Then you can get the bolts going for that. Uh, and then you will, once you get the flange down, you will twist this to line it back up where it's in place. And then you can tighten the top part down to the flange. Okay, so as you can see, we've got some gap here. That's because this is sitting up on the spring and we've just got to take that tension up by tightening this down. Uh, however, uh, we need to do a quarter turn at a time per bolt to do it evenly. So I'm just gonna kind of do a little 25 or quarter turns here on each one and repeat until we have it all the way down. Okay, so we have the pump installed now and all the fuel lines are connected. And one more little tidbit 
uh, is installing this fuel line. Uh, we ran it underneath these hoses and then up, uh, up and around to the back. We had to rotate this all the way because we were originally trying to put it on with the plug side over here, but that interferes with the cam sensor. And so we rotated it this way and then the fuel line, everything lines up perfectly and you're able to get it back there. It's kind of a tight fit. And when you're installing this, you wanna make sure that you can thread this on by hand up to the point that it's like, not like torque tight, but, but tight, um, because uh, that lets you know that it went on properly. Otherwise, it's possible that you'll have a fuel leak there. And so we'll find out here in a little bit when we start the car if I threaded it on properly. <laughs> Um, but for now, we've got the low pressure line connected. We've got the pump plugged in. We've got the cam sensor back on and plugged in. We've got the high pressure line going down the back and then underneath uh, to the fuel rail. And I'm gonna go get my laptop and start um, uh, putting uh, or adjusting the map for the new pump. And JP's going to start putting this back together. So have fun. fucking guy. Okay, so that wraps up all the testing that we needed to do. Uh, we got the pump in, no leaks, thank goodness. And uh, got the car on the dyno despite all the ice and snow outside and nearly getting stuck in the little ice trough that's, in, that's out there, so that was fun. Uh, what we ended up doing, uh, the car was already on an ethanol blend, it was on E30, uh, which is pretty much good for getting you well past the knock limit on these cars and you're not really gonna gain a whole lot. Uh, but we wanted to show a little bit of like what you can get just by upping the ethanol content. So without changing anything in the tune, we started adding a little ethanol, a little ethanol, and worked our way up to uh, full E85. Uh, well, probably around about 82, E82. But uh, we gained, as you can see from this graph that we're gonna put up on the screen, uh, about 20 to 25 foot pounds of torque in different places of the curve. Uh, and about 10 to 15 horsepower up top. I mean, well, about 10 horsepower up top. So, and that's without changing anything in the map. I already preset the map to account for the different levels of ethanol content. Uh, so it was adding ethanol and changing the map slot. And, uh, and, I, and I mean, it's some decent gains for just ethanol. I mean, that's pretty cool. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I knew that we would see a little bit different, um, but, I didn't expect it to be quite that much. Um, and we didn't really see that much of a jump going to like an E50. Uh, it wasn't until we hit the E85 map that we really started seeing the game. It was about, about half as much on E50. So it was about 10 foot pounds of torque and about five horsepower. And then uh, at E85, it was uh, 20 foot pounds of torque and 10 horsepower. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's something that I've never actually got to test before. So, uh, and the XDI pump let us do that. So, yeah. So ultimately, you know, the pump is, we are super excited to get this thing on the car and just see what it did by itself. Just like what difference does an XDI pump make on a mostly, you know, a, a full bolt-on type of, of modified car with, you know, a slight upgraded turbo, if anything for us, this turbo is almost like putting a stock turbo at sea level for us kind yeah. of kind of sort of but yeah regardless it's a fairly stock ish uh type of turbo as far as power output goes so um it's cool to see what just the pump alone does but obviously just by itself it's not a massive change it's not a crazy mod uh it's really what we expected it to be which is kind of what it did but really is going to be a much better supportive mod for what we're gonna do in the future. Like I said before, we're gonna go big turbo, bigger turbo, probably a few different turbos we're gonna test out. So it's ultimately gonna be a supportive mod for those projects. So, but it's nice to see that it is working already. It, there is a, a good, you know, sizable difference already from that pump 
uh, from the, the stock pump going to this pump. So um, we're excited and uh, it's good to see some changes and we're ready to start uh, having some, some real fun now. So we appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, please just let us know. We'll, uh, we'll definitely get you some answers and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys.